Hi, this is Steve Philpott from Extra Medium. I'm also the chief pilot in charge for my scout, which I actually love to say, uh, not just because I get to say chief pilot in charge, but also because uh, when we were thinking about this in 2017, uh, folks were saying that it just wasn't possible for a number of reasons. But um, I was also recently asked a question during a community meeting or after a community meeting, uh, hey, what happens when uh, some other guy comes up and says, hey, I'm just a black guy like you. I have a drone. Uh, can I do it? Um, and thinking about some of the tragic violence that's going on in the city, I thought, well, if that's the case, why not share the blueprint for doing it, right? Let's move beyond man-made limitations. We saw the pain. So uh, when I started flying in, um, oh, I guess it was probably June of last year, I, this thing started flying a little uh, drone. And that, this is what most people, I think, think we're talking about when we talk about drones. And, you know, you could build this for probably $125. You could buy it for, oh, I think uh, a couple hundred dollars, right? And it operates uh, through an app on your phone that allows you to see what the uh, camera on the drone is seeing. <clears throat> uh, so this is, uh, for the most part, a hobby drone. Um, so uh, I actually started flying back in um, August of last year uh, during COVID and or a little before August, as a matter of fact, uh, because of the unrest. Uh, since we've been looking at the drones as a service business for uh, three years or so, um, I thought, well, I should really get into the drone side. Now, the, the guy that came up with the idea, Demetrius Brown, was uh, had the foresight, given his background in emergency management, to say, hey, these drones uh, should be used in a number of different ways to help protect public safety. I am a longtime resident uh, of Inglewood, and as a opponent of security and the concept of uh, my scout uh, was developed as a tool to um, basically to aid in the community in all sorts of things. Uh, security just happens to be one of our main goals and looking at uh, the conditions and the corridors and the areas surrounding Inglewood. Uh, we thought that this would be a great idea for something that the community could be a part of and have interaction with. So our business model is based on that. And but the cost and the process to get into this type of business is not very clear because there are no other businesses actually out there doing what we're doing, putting drones in the hands of residents and businesses so that they can patrol their own um, areas, respective areas. But what we did was decide to fly enterprise class drones. So I'm not endorsing any one particular uh, type of drone, but you need a, a number of capabilities. One, you need, you need high quality, high grade sensors that are uh, omnidirectional, um, you know, front and back at the least, but the more sensors, the better. And 
um, while the 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 notion three years ago was that hey the technology is just isn't there the technology has come a long way this is one of the other uh, enterprise class drones we we fly so this is a substantial um, upgrade from uh, the hobby drone right it's a big big difference big difference and in terms of safety and being able to fly um, with a level of confidence, you really need to invest in enterprise class drones, okay? Like I said, I'm not endorsing any particular brand, but many of the accessories that come with the drones or that you need to have with the drones are um, uh, hit and miss. So you really want to know what you're going to get. So with the, the class we got for the remote, we got the enterprise class remote. This one is, is um, compatible with the other drone. And it also gives us the ability to see um, a lot more uh, and, and be more flexible in what we're trying to do. Also, if you're going to fly, make sure you have uh, lights, different types of lights that you'll need for whatever your mission is going to be. You need additional strobe lights. Um, I like to fly with a set of, you can't see, okay, there, a set of antenna extenders, so signal extenders, and it's not just so your drone can go further, because you, you really can't fly more than, you know, certain distance anyway in this commercial airspace, but it is to help thwart against electronic interference, right? So you need to know about that. So in September, I actually went and got uh, my pilot's license, and so that's another thing you need to do. You need to study to get the Part 107, the FAA Part 107 drone license so that you can be certified as a remote pilot so that you can operate these drones commercially. You can certainly buy the drones, you just can't operate them uh, for a fee. Um, also, you'll need to uh, have some additional equipment for your own uh, comfort. So one of the things that I find real important is, of course, the strap for your controllers, whether it's the, that type or this type, sorry, of controller, you wanna get the best, uh, you can't see it, well, I'll put a picture. You wanna get the best straps you can get because uh, in this business, you'll be flying uh, three hour rotations in most cases. Um, and so you're out there for quite a while. Lastly, You'll need to do community engagement. People don't want you flying over uh, their homes and, and things of that nature. And so you have to have rules that you can present to the community, the rules you follow a flight. Um, and those rules are the way you should fly. So if um, you tell them, hey, I'm flying uh, in, in, a, in a way that I'll never capture any of your information, you should be able to clearly express that and clearly show that in the way that you um, demo your product. Um, also, you need to understand that uh, drones have uh, come a long way because of farmers, really. They want to see more of their farms without, you know, buying more equipment, and spending more energy to get around. So drones really came from that. And so the, the requirement for flight, a long flight is like 30 minutes, right? So that's what the battery life, a good battery typically has at least 30 minutes. And those batteries are about you know, they run about $200 each for 30 minutes. So think if you're gonna be running three hour uh, uh, missions or at least three hour rotations of missions, you're gonna need a lot of these batteries. So we suggest um, to have uh, six batteries per bird, whether, you know, whatever, but make sure that they're intelligent batteries that one, they stay heated, two, they tell you when they're getting low and six birds per area if you're flying a three mile area. Now, if you're just doing it for your house, then I don't know how you're gonna do security and work and all the other stuff, but if you're doing it as a business in an area, you're gonna need more, you're gonna need redundant number of birds because the number of cycles is finite. The number of times you can use a drone across a, a distance at speed and, and the wear and tear, uh, you need redundancy to make sure, uh, to ensure the safety of the flights. 
Also, you need insurance to fly. Each flight needs to be covered. And that means um, in addition to whatever warranty you have on the aircraft hardware, you need to have some investment in if your drone, God forbid, uh, injures someone in some way, you need to have uh, personal liability coverage or liability coverage. Uh, we have up to a million dollars per occurrence, uh, up to 15 million. So you need to have uh, insurance uh, also. And when you are flying commercially, flying a drone commercially, you are indeed a commercial pilot and you have to adhere to the rules of the sky. So there's ongoing information you need to know from uh, standard training and uh, skills assessments and things of that nature that the FDA wants to make sure that you're uh, adhering to, uh, as well as up to the moment notifications uh, uh, from the FAA, from air traffic control, from municipal authority about what's going on. So you wanna have, uh, you wanna have the apps that help you do that. And you also wanna have a field management system or a flight management system that will help you see your birds in the air um, and allow you to uh, um, control or at least monitor the flight um, and any incidences that may come up. It, when you're looking at the cost of the actual enterprise drones, the ones we look at run between $25 and $4,500. The remote controllers, if you bought them separately, are about $1,000 each. Um, batteries, like I said, are about $200. Then you have the accessories that in the enterprise class, they typically come with them. So things like the, the, the speaker for crowd control or you know, spotlights to kind of freak people out or whatever you're gonna do. Um, so, uh, th so that's the cost to do it. And there's also the actual training on your bird. You actually need to know how to fly a drone um, confidently, well, and absolutely safely. So you have to have a number of hours of flight, ongoing flight to just hone your skills of flying. So uh, the cost to uh, benefit ratio is not there unless you have scalability. Um, you can, as you scale, look at bringing in additional money from uh, photography, real estate, building inspections, things like that, uh, if you wanted to get into the business. And if you still needed that level of protection and you didn't, want to go through all the nuts and bolts to get into the business, you could just call my scout.